Did you know that your house is the most valuable the very first day it goes in the market and every day after that the value goes down? So what do you do to sell your house fast and for the most money? This is David and Amy Vendor, the Vendor Group serving all your real estate needs in the South Metro Atlanta area. And these are our top five tips to selling that house fast and for the most money. So first on our list is curb appeal. You only get one chance, guys, to make a good first impression. How would you feel if you went to a restaurant and the windows were dirty and you walk in and there's food and grime and stuff all over the wow. floor? <laughs> and the wait staff is the same way, they're covered in grime. How would you feel about that food? You're probably gonna turn around and walk away. And you know what? Sometimes that happens with houses. We have actually driven up to a house with a buyer and they say, keep going. Yeah, don't even stop, nope. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen at your house. So go out, stand at the curb, literally, and look at the mailbox, look at the yard. Are there are a lot of weeds. You know, it, that happens. It, it happens really at our house. Uh, here in Georgia, uh, for people out of state, we have pine straw in our beds. So either fresh mulch, fresh pine straw. Also, a lot of houses, you drive up to the house and the first thing you see is the garage door. Clean it. Use auto wash on it. Like you Wash it just like you would your car and it really can brighten those garage doors up. Power wash that sidewalk. Yes. Oh, yeah. We love mold here in Georgia with the humidity. <laughs> so go ahead and power wash the driveway, the walkway. So as they're walking up to that front door, make it a good walk. You want that great first impression. So next on our list is basic home maintenance. Or as we like to call it, deferred maintenance. You know, all that stuff that around your house that you just kind of put off doing, you know it's there. So like cleaning out the gutters. We have a 100-pound golden doodle, and he tends to scratch at the front door. That needs to be repaired. It needs to be painted. Baseboards need to be painted. Caulk around the tub. You have a leaky faucet? Take care of that. You have uh, light bulbs out in that 20 foot uh, ceiling, uh, get those light bulbs replaced so when they come in they turn on the lights, it's a nice big bright room. Just in general, you want the house to look like it's ready to go to get that top dollar. So next on the list is decluttering and depersonalizing. And we decided to put those together intentionally. So a big thing to remember when you're selling your home, you want that buyer to walk through yep. the doors and be able to envision themselves in your house. And that means taking away some of those personal items. And you also want to declutter. You want a room to feel as big as possible. Uh, you don't want people to be distracted by having a bunch of stuff in the corner. And a great way to do this is things you're not going to want to pack up and move, maybe give it to Goodwill. Or you can rent a storage unit and put things, the extra uh, sofa in a storage unit. You can even put things in your garage. Uh, just make sure you put it in the center of the garage, make it look nice and neat, where an inspector and potential buyers can walk around and see the, see the walls and get to the mechanicals. And when we say depersonalize, a lot of times people think get rid of all your personal photographs. And there's a reason for that and that that has to do with people being able to envision themselves. I also, I notice when I have buyers and there's a lot of family portraits, people are looking at the family portraits. They do. They don't <laughs> go and look at the room or look at the beautiful fireplace. They're there focusing on the family. Like, you right, you buy the house, not to buy, not to buy a picture. You could have beautiful crown molding, and they're not going to notice that. Not. They're trying to figure out if they know who the owner is. So that's one aspect. I tell our sellers when we're staging a house, leave one or two out because if you go into a model home, yep. what do you see? You by the nightstand, you see a little picture. It's of a fake person. But they're trying to make it seem personal. So in depersonalizing, you know, pare down the personal items. It also has to do, maybe you love the color red and you've got a gorgeous red dining room. Well, to me, that's personalizing it. So you yeah. kind of want to appeal to the masses. And in doing so, you probably are going to want more of a neutral color paint because Susie may walk into that house or Tommy and they may hate the color red and believe it or not, they may not be able to get past that, even though a simple paint job would take care of that. So in short, as much decluttering and depersonalizing as possible will make your house shine for that buyer.
So fourth on the list is updates. Do you do them? So we've had clients in the past that think that they need to do an $80,000 complete kitchen gut job, and they didn't. They just needed to paint their cabinets, put some fresh granite down, update the hardware, and they spent a fraction of that amount of money, and they got all that in back when they sold. So here's where we recommend meeting with a realtor. If you're in the area, we'd love to sit down with you. But this is where a realtor is going to know mm -hmm. what the market is, what the trends are. Um, and again, going back when we talked about decluttering and depersonalizing, you want people to be able to come in and envision themselves in your home. But you also don't want them to feel overwhelmed. Like they've got to do yes. so much stuff. I have to do the carpets. I have to do the paint. I have to do all these things. And they, they, you feel, know why? they feel overwhelmed. Well, they get overwhelmed, and you know what else they do? They overinflate yes. what that's going to cost them. So maybe you need new carpet. They're going to go in, and you might be able to go to Fayette Flooring yep. um, and get some new carpet and spend $3,000 for that carpet. Well, guess what? In their head, they're thinking eight to ten thousand. Yeah, they are. so you know that's we've seen it time and time again, and that's where I think you look around your house. Yep. If you've been in your home for twenty five years and you haven't really done any updating, and you've still got that Berber carpet from the nineties, <laughs> and it may still be in good shape, it may be time to take that Berber carpet out and freshen it. You may need to paint. You may need to look at your kitchen. And you know, and that's where sometimes too, if you're in a million dollar home and you haven't updated in a long time, that expectation of that buyer yes. is gonna be a much, little much higher. higher. So it may be time to take the Corian countertop out and put in a quartz countertop. So those are the things that is a, a realtor we can bring to the table and any good realtor is going to be able to sit down with you and say this is probably where you might want to consider updating it's great to have a good realtor to show you where to spend the money and where you can get the most bang for your buck now the other thing is you may be sitting there and saying that's all well and good amy and dave but i have no money to spend on updating and that happens and it does. So that's where price and condition come together. And so that's where as a realtor, they can sit down and say, okay, go ahead, clean your house and declutter and, and depersonalize. Yeah. And, and then we will price it for According the According to the condition. Yes. Because the last thing you want to do is overprice that house and it's going to sit on the market and the value is going to continue to go down. You want to sell it as fast as you can. Absolutely. So last on the list and probably the most overlooked and in our area, probably the least done is proper staging. So did you know that recent studies show that you can get on average as much as 20% more if your home is staged? That's an amazing amount of money just for doing a little bit of extra effort. So there are professional stagers. Your realtor may suggest a stager that you can pay to come in and either use your items to stage the home or bring their own. We personally, and it's one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> We personally stage our listings. she does a listings. really good job. She does. Um, our assistant, Teresa, helps. And we have a big storage unit full of things that we bring in. Once a seller has depersonalized and decluttered and taken some of those things out, the job of staging yeah. is to go in and to identify spaces. So a lot of times you have to define a room. Right. We've had situations where... People would walk into the house and they go, what's this space good for? Amy will come in there and stage it and make it into a playroom, an office, a game room, something. And then when it goes on the market, they're like, what a valuable space this is. Instead of what can we do with it? And it's just planning an idea in the buyer's brain of what they could use it for. Maybe they need a home office, maybe they don't, maybe they need a playroom, but it gives that room a purpose. The other thing is how you put your furniture. Yes. It can open the eye. You Staging also, maybe you want to detract from something in the house. Where you put a painting, mm -hmm. if you do or you don't, the size of the painting, all those things come into play. The other thing, light and mm -hmm. bright, and we can't emphasize that enough. 
There's so many times when I've taken a client into a house and all the lights are turned off and it's dark and the window shades are pulled and it just comes off as dreary. And that may be how you live. I mean, in terms of you may prefer all the lights off if you're not, maybe you grew up, if you walk out of a room, you turn off that light (laughs) and it doesn't come back on until you walk into that room and the blinds are all pulled and, and you have dark window treatments and that's fine. But again, we have to remember how we live. And how we stage are two very different things. When we sold our house, Amy transformed it. It it was very different from the way we lived to the way we staged it. Because how we live, it's our personal taste. And our personal taste may be fine, but again, it may not appeal to a broad spectrum of buyers. And that's what you want to do to get the most amount of money. So defining spaces, enlarging rooms by where you put things, how you place them. Drawing the eye to certain areas, drawing the eye away from other areas. Yes, and then lightening and brightening. So you may have to go in and paint a lighter color, and it may be well worth it. You know, painting is pretty inexpensive. I mean, for all the, you know, all the different home maintenance things, it, 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 you probably have the most bang for your buck with painting. It's probably the cheapest with the biggest impact. Yeah, because people will come in and they'll look at a home that hasn't been freshly painted, and the trim is beat up and hasn't. Trust me, they're calculating in their head how much it's going to cost to do that. Or they're thinking if this room looks, if the paint's beat up, what's the air conditioner like? What's the roof like? What's all these other things like? So that's another element that comes into staging is taking care of all of those things. But it really does more than pay for itself. So these are our top five tips to get the most amount for your house in the shortest amount of time. We would love to help you with that. If you are anywhere in the South Metro Atlanta area, check out our information below. Call, text, email us, and we'd love to come and sit down and talk through these things with you in person. Or we can meet you for coffee or a glass of wine if you'd like.